What's going on guys? Hope you're doing well. Today we're going to be doing some car photography uh, along the marsh here. Uh, just I'm going to share some a few tips for you beginner bird photographers that can hopefully help you with your workflow. You can hear the frogs going. What's really cool about utilizing your vehicle uh, for uh, wildlife photography is that you're stationary and you're pretty much hidden for the most part away from the wildlife. Uh, you can be comfortable, you know what I mean? You can have all your gear off to the side and uh, have all the luxuries in a vehicle instead of uh, being out in the elements if it's like really, really sticky hot and humid or really frigid, frigid cold. It's really rainy and wet and miserable out and uh, you wanna stay dry, uh, this is the way to do it. There are some red-winged blackbirds over here that are just tormenting this egret. <laughs> Won't leave them alone. so crazy so the first tip that I have is actually utilizing a window bean bag these things are really convenient uh, not just uh, for when on your hikes if you want to get low as a ground pod and just put it on the ground and get really low to the ground but uh, they're great for your car window all you got to do is fill it up with some rice or something similar and prop it over your door window now it's really stable for your lens your camera so you can shoot out your window. Here comes a blue heron. I got some brush in my way that's right here off to the side right in front of the window here that I might see if we cannot uh, get a bit a little bit closer. That's what I think I'm gonna do. Alrighty, I was hoping he'd uh, dive in and get some food, get a fish. You can hear the frogs. <laughs> so my next tip is make sure you bring some extra spare batteries with you because you'll be out in the field and your batteries will be dead. Also, this is a good opportunity to also scout with binoculars. Just swing around. I know if I step out of the car, I'm gonna lose him. He's like looking right at me. So another good tip if you're not out and about and you're at your home and you still wanna you know, improve your craft, make a makeshift bird feeder in your backyard. Uh, get some, go out to the grocery store and get some bird seed and uh, make little, little perches in your backyard, your garden, and uh, make some uh, bird feeders. Even making like a little small homemade pond uh, would probably draw in so much wildlife. Got the blue heron here, gonna, I think he's trying to get some food. I also find it easier sometimes to switch over to manual focus when the wildlife is more further out and it's, they're farther out in the distance, where if the, the, if the subject is closer to you, uh, your autofocus should uh, work just fine. Ooh, it's hot. It's one downside of sitting in one spot. Man. The next tip is get yourself some, some bird calls. Uh, these things work great for waterfowl, for ducks, for geese, for eagles, for hawks. Each one, it's a little bit of a learning curve on how to use each one of them, but uh, once you get them down and you get the hang of it, um, a lot of the times the wildlife will be drawn in towards you. Once you get the hang of them, they're pretty fun out in the field to use. They're lightweight. They don't take much space up in your bag. And now there's a duck <laughs> that's 
kind of far out there. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get him though. He's really far out there, but that's funny. Another tip that's pretty much beat to death, guys, and uh, but that's still really, really true, and that is to get eye level, get low to the ground, get eye level with your subject. Um, if you're not in a blind stationary or if you're not in your vehicle like I am, this will allow more separation of the background, be able to blow out that background more, and uh, have the subject stand out more. You're telling a different story. It's more intimate with the wildlife. A small, tiny butterfly, like right next to my car. I don't even know zooming back into 100 millimeters is even going to be enough. Let's see. Those red-winged blackbirds are going after this white egret again. <laughs> Oh, that's great. So my next tip is to have your camera settings set on high speed continuous uh, and also uh, a high frame rate. So whatever your camera uh, is capable of doing, whether it's 10 frames per second, 15, 30 frames, 40 frames per second, uh, to go into your settings on your camera and uh, set that to high speed continuous as well as keeping a fast and high shutter speed typically for really small birds or fast birds you want a shutter speed of no less than like one one thousandth of a second to where the bigger wildlife the slower wildlife like the eagles egrets herons uh, elk moose bear deer whatever uh, you can get away with a slower shutter speed so if you're not familiar with high speed continuous and high frame rates you want to go into your your menu system uh, this is canon whether you shoot so sony or nikon i'm pretty sure they're similar maybe different verbiage for canon it's the red folder and af operation and you're going to click on that and it'll bring you to this option one shot or servo you want to click on servo then you want to set your autofocus method to bird eye tracking, animal eye tracking if your camera has that option. And then you want to click continuous autofocus. That way it tracks the wildlife. <laughs> and I'm missing shots <laughs> of these blue herons flying by. Come on. There we go. Got some in the bag. I like setting my images on RAW. That way I can uh, have more control uh, in editing and post-processing my images. So I just hit RAW instead of JPEG. Still fairly decent light outside. So I can still get away with one one thousandth of a second at F9 and ISO 200. If you're not shooting in automatic and you're shooting in manual, as the sun you know, plays around in the sky and clouds move over or, or you start to lose light, you'll have to adjust your shutter speed uh, to drop that a little bit to be able to raise up your ISO uh, just to be able to still get a clean image. I don't think we're gonna get any eagles today. It'd be nice if we had one fly over or perched up in a tree today, but it doesn't look like that's gonna happen. But we'll stick in this area for a little bit longer and see what else we can get. But I wanna just say that the next tip I think uh, is important is just turn the camera off for a little bit and uh, put the camera down, set it aside, and really take in nature for what it is and just relax because it's it's about the experience. It's about the journey that you're going through and the experience as a nature and wildlife photographer. Getting a photo, yeah, that's, that's important. And that's what we're out here for, right? Uh, is to do our photography. But more of it's more about... <laughs> it's about this. It's about the experience. It's about being out in nature. So I really want to also experiment with macro photography on the channel. Uh, I think it's overlooked and it's like a whole nother world guys that's right under our feet. 
that we just neglect as photographers and we walk past uh, every single day, every single outing that we're out. Oh, man. I want some eagles. I don't think I'm going to get eagles today, but I want some eagles. There's a bunch of ducks way out there. I don't think I'm going to get those guys either. So my last tip for beginner bird photographers is listen to podcasts uh, and get knowledgeable on reading, you know, books on species and learning about the habitats and bird behavior, your, whatever you're going after. So many good podcasts out there uh, to listen to and get educated by and learn something from and, and just the ethics of nature and wildlife photography. There's a great app that you can find within your app store on your phone and it's called eBird uh, by Cornell Labs and it will just help you navigate uh, your local area and uh, find the different types of uh, wildlife that are in your local area. So utilize those uh, tools that are to your advantage. And we're always learning, you know what I mean? There's, there's never a time where we're ever at a point along our journey as photographers that we know everything. As much as I enjoy talking about gear and I get geeked out about gear, cameras, lenses, it's less about the gear and it's more about learning about the habitat and learning about the species and taking photos and just being out here for the experience. There's really no bad photograph, guys. Only a missed opportunity. If you did enjoy the video, please consider giving it a like. It helps YouTube push it out in front of more people. If you're interested in helping support the channel by any means and becoming a member, uh, you can do that and it's only $1.99 a month. And it helps me come out here and pays for gas to come out here to the marshes and to the lakeshore and do photography and bring these adventures to you guys. Becoming a member of the channel will also give you some small perks such as 10% uh, off merchandise and a monthly live stream with me as well as behind the scenes photos and channel member shout outs here on the channel. I also have a couple cool designs for merchandise, t-shirts, hats, mugs, stuff like that. Uh, you can find those in my merch store as well as just checking out maybe my affiliate links down below of all the gear that I utilize and uh, that'll help support the channel as well. If you purchase an item through my affiliate links, it gives me a small commission, a couple dollars just to fill up my gas tank as well. If you don't want to miss future videos on nature and wildlife photography, hit the subscribe button and come along with me. I would much appreciate it. Until the next video, take care, God bless guys, and I'll see you guys on the next adventure. Cheers.